let's move to Mfaweli for a look at our five-day weather forecast. Over to you, Mfaweli. Thank you, Michi. But one thing's for sure is it will be cold. But good news, though, it will start to heat up at about 20 hours every weekday as Zuba comes in with all that drama, which, of course, will lead to a further rise in temperature as the gripping intensity of Mbali catches you every Monday to Thursday at 20, 30 hours. Come Thursday, Michi, Esther, Mtale, and Natasha will serve up some hot topics with some popular guests on Tuvange at 21, 30 hours. Come Friday, the security guards will lock out all that chilly weather at 19, 30 hours. Getting us to 2030 when Uncle Limbani drops whatever cold front may be in the air. But it will not be swimming season just yet. So be sure to follow the heated build up to the big day of my kitchen party at 21 hours. Thank you, Mfaweli. I guess it's time to trade in the cold outdoors for entertaining moments indoors. Stay connected to DSTV this winter and warm up with the best local stories exclusively available on... Tuesday, the 22nd of, um, I beg your pardon, the 26th of October 2021, which is basically a period just we're coming through from our 57th Independence as a Republic of uh, Zambia, which falls on the 24th of October of each year. I do hope that you had a wonderful time to go celebrate and commemorate Zambia's 57th birthday and so to be with you on continuity this afternoon my name is julius musumali and my name is apolline monga good afternoon right uh, we begin by your uh, business of uh, the house that was considered on friday the 22nd of october which basically had uh, three rulings and uh, other business followed but we'll look at some of the highlights in the rulings that uh, madam speaker made and uh, this was uh, the first one was um in which Madam Deputy Speaker, first Deputy Speaker, reminded the House that on Tuesday, the 19th of October 2021, Mr. Fube, Member of Parliament for Chiluwe, raised a matter of public, uh, urgent public importance, pursuant to Standing Order 134 of the National Assembly of Zambia, Standing Orders 2021. And in um, that point, he alleged that uh, there was, uh, there were sustained and sponsored attacks against the Director of um, Public Prosecution. DPP on social media regarding the operations of her office in general and how she had used her power to enter Nole Prosqua in particular and sought the speaker's direction on the matter. And uh, the Honorable Madam First Deputy Speaker stated that the rationale for raising matters of public importance understanding Order 134 was to allow members um, to bring serious and urgent matters that only members of parliament could be privy to, to the immediate attention of the House and uh, the government, which, if not acted upon immediately by government, could result in a catastrophe leading to the loss of uh, life or property. Madam First uh, Deputy Speaker then informed the House that while the issue raised by Mr. Fube may be important, it did not require the immediate action of the government to avert a calamity as envisaged by Standing Order Number 134, and therefore the matter was inadmissible as a matter of uh, urgent public importance. And in conclusion, Madam First Deputy Speaker urged members to acquaint themselves with the rules governing matters of urgent public importance. The second ruling, Pauline. Yes, uh, in the second ruling, Madam First Deputy Speaker reminded the House that on Thursday, 14th October 2021, when the House was considering question for oral answer number 34, and Mr. Anakoka, Member of Parliament for Luena, was about to ask a supplementary question, Mr. S. Kampiongo, Member of Parliament for Shiwangandu, raised the point of order as to whether the Honorable Minister of Education was in order to refuse to respond to his question, but instead directed Honorable Kampiongo to file a question for the minister to enumerate policy when the House, uh, when the Honorable Minister responded to the question, when the Honorable Minister's responses to the question were more of a policy nature. 
And in her ruling, Madam First Deputy Speaker referred to Standing Order Number 131 of the National Assembly of Zambia, Standing Orders 2021, which require members to cite the Standing Order, Law or Privilege of Members, Rule of Procedure or Practice, which had been alleged breached, and stated that the relevant verbatim record of uh, that of what transpired on the material day revealed that Mr. Campiongo did not cite the standing orders, law on privilege or rule of procedure that the Honorable Minister of Education had breached. She therefore ruled that the point of order was inadmissible. And Madam First Deputy Speaker urged members again to clearly, clearly cite the rule, law, privilege, practice or procedure breached whenever they raised points of order. Under the third ruling, um Madam First Deputy Speaker reminded the House that on Friday, 15th October 2021, when the House was considering question for oral answer number 40, and Mr. D. Mwandu, Member of Parliament for Chama South, was on the floor, Mr. A. C. Mumba, Member of Parliament for Kantan, she raised a point of order as to whether Honorable Minister of Youth, Sport and uh, Arts was in order to mislead the House by stating that the national internship and apprenticeship uh, program under his ministry would continue when the national youth the development council which was responsible for the program had issued a letter indicating that the program would come to an end on 31st october 2021 madam first the pit speaker informed the house that in order to address mr mumba's uh, point of order she had recourse to the verbatim record of the proceedings on the matter and that the record revealed that the honorable minister of youth sport and arts did not did in fact state that the internship program would continue. She informed the House that uh, she further had recourse on to an electronic copy of the letter addressed to all provincial youth development coordinators referred to by Mr. Mumba in his point of order, which he sent to the office of the clerk using the WhatsApp messaging service. Madam First Deputy Speaker observed that the National Youth Development Council was a public body established under the National Youth Development Council Act, Chapter 144 of the Laws of Zambia, and therefore the letter Mr. Mumba MP relied upon in his point of order was a public court document. Uh, further, Madam Speaker, referred to Standing Order 139 of uh, the National Assembly Standing Orders 2021, mm. which prescribed a, back, back, the, a backbencher from uh, tabling a copy of public document unless it was a certified it was certified a true copy of the original and informed the house that a backbencher could only table a hard copy of public um, of a public document which had been authenticated by government ministry a department or agents that had uh, original custody of the document and madam first the speaker therefore ruled that since uh, mr mumba did not table the letter and the letter was not authenticated as required by standing order 139 the letter was inadmissible and consequently his point of order was inadmissible and after that we had her honor the vice president's question time without notice that is for 45 minutes and uh, questions for oral answer also followed in the house accordingly adjourned at uh, 11.41. On the other side, we'll be looking at today's business. Stay tuned. Welcome back. And uh, today, Tuesday, 26th October 2021, we have uh, two questions uh, that are on the order paper. And these are understanding order number 74. And uh, the first question is coming from uh, uh, Mufumbwe Member of Parliament, Mr. Elliot Kamondo. And he wants to ask a, a question to the Minister of Education. And the first part of the question, he wants to know whether government has any plans uh, to construct a university in Northwestern Province. And the first, uh, second part of the question, he wants to know if so, when the plans will be implemented. The second question comes from uh, Kawe Central Member of our Parliament, Ms. Chrysosta Halwindi, directed the Minister of Small and Medium Enterprise Development in three parts. In part A, she wants to find out whether the government has any empowerment programs for small and medium enterprises in Kawe Central Parliamentary Constituency, and if so, that is in part B, what the plans are and in the last part which is part c she wants to find out when the plans will be implemented so those are the two questions for oral answer that are coming up for consideration in a short while as we now witness the honorable madam speaker's procession making way into the chamber stay tuned
of leaders and parliaments for the welfare of society and the just government of the people. We beseech you to consider with your abundant favor us, your servants, whom you have been pleased to call to the performance of such important responsibilities in this land. Let your blessing descend upon us here in parliament assembled and grant that we may, as in your presence, treat and consider all matters that shall come under our deliberation in so just and faithful a manner as to promote your honor and glory and to advance the peace, prosperity, and welfare of our country and of those whose interests you have committed to our church. Amen. Honorable members, the House will recall that on Thursday, 12th October 2021, the Honorable Madam First Deputy Speaker directed the Honorable Member for Nkana to reduce in writing the matter of public importance relating to the over 150 houses allegedly on the verge of collapse in his constituency. In raising the matter, the Honorable Member stated that, stated to the effect that the state of affairs of the houses has been going on for more than two years. Honorable Members, the criteria for admitting matters of urgent public importance are set out in Standing Order 135 of the National Assembly of Zambia Standing Orders 2021 which states as follows, admissibility of matter of urgent public importance. 135.1, a matter shall be considered urgent and of public importance if A, it is a case of recent occurrence, B, it does not relate to a general state of affairs, C, it involves the administrative or ministerial responsibility of the government, D, it requires the immediate attention of the House and the government, and E, it deals with only substantive issue. Two, a, member, a matter is inadmissible if, as a matter of urgent public importance if A, it has not been raised at the earliest opportunity, B, it has already been discussed by the House during the same session, C, it is not so serious as to require the urgent attention of the House and the government, or D is sub -judice. 
It is clear from the provision that uh, from this provision that a matter that fails to satisfy the criteria set out in paragraphs A to E of standing order number 135 one is inadmissible in this regard. The matter raised by the Honorable Member Fonkana does not qualify to be a matter of urgent public importance because it does not satisfy the requirements of paragraph A of standing order 135.1, which requires that the matter be of recent occurrence. The matter which the Honorable Member has uh, uh, raised has been in that state for more than two years. For this reason, the directive that the Honorable Madam First Deputy Speaker made on Thursday, 21st October 2021, is hereby withdrawn, and the Honorable Member from Kana has been accordingly guided on the way forward. I thank you. I have permitted the Honorable Minister of Home Affairs and Internal Security to make a ministerial statement. <clears throat> the Honorable Minister of Home Affairs and Internal Security. Madam Speaker, I would like to thank you most sincerely for according me this opportunity to make two ministerial statements as directed by yourself, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, with your permission, allow me to make the statements as directed in the following manner. Madam Speaker, I shall start with the, my ministerial statement on the security at toll gates following the attack on a police officer and cashiers at Kalense toll gate in Kasama on 8th October 2021. Thereafter, Madam Speaker, I shall proceed to issue another ministerial st statement on the alleged escalating levels of violence countrywide. Madam Speaker, as indicated, I now proceed to make my first ministerial statement. Madam Speaker, I thank you for according me this opportunity to issue a ministerial statement on the point of order raised by Honorable Mao Sampa, Member of Parliament for Matero, constituency on the security at toll gates following the attack on a police officer and cashiers at Kalense toll gate in Kasama on 8th October 2021. Madam Speaker, facts of the matter are uh, that on, on 8th October 2021 in Kasama, Kasama Central Police recorded an, a murder case in which a Zambia police officer was fatally shot while he's on duty at Kalensi toll station situated about 25 kilometers from Kasama town between 02 and 04 hours by a lone bandit. The police also recorded a case of aggravated robbery in which cash amounting to 38,425 kwacha and property worth 12,288 were robbed from the officer and two toll gate cashiers. The police further recorded two cases of rape in which the two cashiers were allegedly raped by the same bandit. Madam Speaker, government re regrets the incidents and would like to send a message of condolences 
to the family of the deceased police officer. Let me also take this opportunity to wish the two cashiers a quick recovery. Madam Speaker, in relation to the concerns raised by the Honorable Member of Parliament, I wish to state the following, that the lives of our officers in that infrastructure and elsewhere are safe as we have increased manpower and intensified patrols in our tow stations. Two, no arrest has been made yet. However, investigations into the matter have reached an advanced stage and the nation will be informed about the outcome in due course. Three, the two cashiers have since undergone counseling through the Zambia Police Victim Support Unit and have been deployed to another place. Madam Speaker, the incident is a violation of human rights which should be condemned by all Zambians. The new Dawn government considers security as, as a magnet for investment to, force, to foster social economic development in the country. To avoid the recurrence of such incidences, Madam Speaker, the Zambia Police Service has put in place the following measures. Enhanced intelligence gathering. Two, increased surveillance patrols at tow targets across the country. And three, increased manpower levels at all tow stations. Madam Speaker, let me take this opportunity to assure the nation that the Zambia Police Service has intensified security at tow, tow stations in the country and I appeal to the general citizens to report any suspicious persons and activities to the Zambia Police Service. Further, I wish to warn the perpetrators of crime that they will be met with the full wrath of the law. Madam Speaker, I thank you. <clears throat> with your permission, Madam Speaker, may I proceed to issue my second ministerial statement. This relates to the alleged escalating levels of violence countrywide. Madam Speaker, let me thank you for giving me the opportunity to make a ministerial statement on the points of order raised by Honorable Brian Mundubile, leader of the opposition, member of parliament from Prokoso constituency, and Honorable Davidson Mungandu, Member of Parliament for Chama South constituency regarding the allegedly escalating levels of violence in the country. Madam Speaker, let me assure the nation through this August House that the situation in the country is peaceful, contrary to the insinuations being portrayed by some political parties. The New Dawn administration abhors violence Violence, regardless of the source and form, is a vice which should not be condoned by all peace-loving Zambians. Madam Speaker, government has noted with con great concern of this isolated case of violence being recorded in some parts of the country. Let me now address the specific instances raised by the two Honorable Members of Parliament. Madam Speaker, on 8th October 2021, Honorable Christopher Chakafuswa was appearing before court over an election petition case. During the process, alleged United Party for National Development supporters identified a person they suspected to have been involved in a murder case of a UPND supporter, which occurred on 19th July 2021 in Mandevu. The alleged supporters manhandled the suspect, but quick action by the Zambia Police Service restored law and order. This was a violation of the sanctity of court from which we all look for justice. 
I wish to indicate that investigations in this matter are ongoing and the nation will be informed in due course on the outcome. Madam Speaker, with respect to the violence that occurred in Kaumbwe constituents in Petauke, district whereby elections were taking place, I wish to inform this August House that the Zambia Police Service recorded, recorded a number of incidences during the campaign period, during the campaign period. On 18th October 2021, two vehicles, registration number BAD 2385 and BAD 8730, which were in the convoy of Patriotic Front, Vice President Honorable Given Lubinda, were damaged by a mob suspected to be UPND cutters. Investigations on this matter are still going on. Madam Speaker, on Election Day, Thursday, 21st October 2021, the Zambia Police Service impounded a motor vehicle registration number ACX9847 found with the offensive weapons and its tanger material for the Patriotic Front Party. Five people have been arrested and charged for being in possession of offensive weapons. They have since been released on police board. Let me urge the Zambia Police Service to expeditiously bring all those involved to book, regardless of political affiliation. Madam Speaker, His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Zambia, Mr. Akainde Ichilema, made it clear during the official opening of the first session of the 13th National Assembly that the new Dawn government does not condone any form of violence. It is in this regard that His Excellency has directed all law enforcement agencies to be professional in the discharge of their duties. The government of the United Party for National Development will not be kind to any form of violence. This is a clear demonstration that government is committed to ensuring that the people of Zambia fully enjoy their civil rights and liberties. We are indeed in control of the affairs of the country. Madam Speaker, to prevent violence, the Zambia Police Service is implementing measures intended to ensure that violence in all its manner and form comes to an end. Some of these measures include the following. One, enhance cooperation and understanding amongst the members of the public, leaders of political parties, as well as their party cadres. Two, enhance crowd management control, particularly during by-elections. Three, discouraging political parties from ferrying cadres to areas where there are by-elections. Four, engaging stakeholders on the importance of unity regardless of political, religious, and ethnic grouping to avoid loss of life and damage to property. And five, sensitizing the general public on the importance of upholding the the rule of law and order. Madam Speaker, let me warn all those perpetuating violence, specifically political party cadres, that they are not exceptional to the provisions of the law. Perpetrators of violence will be dealt with regardless of political affiliation. Let me assure the nation, Madam Speaker, through this August House, that the new Dawn administration is anchored on the rule of law. Yeah. Madam Speaker, I thank you. Thank you.
Honorable members are now free to ask questions on points of clarification on the two ministerial statements given by the Honorable Minister of Home Affairs and Internal Security, the Honorable Leader of Opposition. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker, for this opportunity. And I also wish to thank the Honorable Minister of Home Affairs for his statement. I also wish to commend him for having come out strongly. That is the Jack Mwimbu we know when it comes to violence. Yeah. The Zambian people, this time around, are hoping that, uh, Honorable Minister, your words will match your actions. Now, Honorable Minister, when you look at uh, the incidences that we cited in the point of order, relating to the arrest of Honorable Chisopa, the courts, when you're still on the stand, Honorable Chanda, remember Mutale, the mayor of Kawe, witnesses in Honorable Mausampa's case, and indeed Honorable witnesses in Honorable Christopher Shakafuswa's case. This obviously cannot be a coincidence. The Zambian people would like to know, Honorable Minister, is there an invisible hand behind all these arrests? I thank you. The Honorable Minister of Home Affairs and Internal Security. <clears throat> thank you, Madam Speaker. And I would like to thank uh, the Honorable new leader of the opposition <laughs> for the kind words attributed to me. <laughs> Madam Speaker, I want to state that uh, as the new Dawn administration, we have made an assurance to the nation and we are going to live by that assurance that we will not be involved whatsoever in the administration of uh, the criminal justice system in the country. We have no interest whatsoever in instructing Zambia police on any or any other security agencies to target or take action against any member of the public. Madam Speaker, we will not want to repeat what used to happen in the sad 10 years of the PF. Yeah, 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 yeah. We would want every Zambian, irrespective of political affiliation, to enjoy their civil rights and liberties as enshrined in the Constitution. I've heard my honorable colleague cite examples of Honorable Chisopa, Honorable Remember Mutale, that they were arrested while taking their stand in court. Madam Speaker, that is not the correct position. Honorable Remember Mutale and Honorable Chisopa were arrested outside court, and they were being arrested for heinous crimes. They are allegedly having com been committed during the, the period prior to the 12th August 2021 general elections. The police when they realize that they, they are enjoying their, their obligations and rights under the new Dawn administration, and there was no interference from my office, decided to enforce the rule of law by ensuring that those who had committed offenses yeah. before the elections yeah. are brought to book. Yeah. And it's important, and it's important to note, Madam Speaker, that there is no statute of limitation pertaining to criminal offenses. If you, ha you had committed the offenses before and you were enjoying perceived immunity, yeah, yeah. which is not recognized by law, the police will follow you yeah. under the new Dawn administration. And that is exactly what happened. On the other issues which 
the honorable member has indicated, Madam Speaker, I've condemned the activities at court. And I did specify that there is sanctity at court. All of us must respect court grounds and that no violence should take place at those places. Yeah. Madam Speaker, I thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. The Honorable Member for Zambezi East. Madam Speaker, for the opportunity to ask the Honorable Minister of Home Affairs and Internal Security a follow-up question. Madam Speaker, uh, through you, I would like to find out from the Honorable Minister of Home Affairs and Internal Security the following. Honorable Minister, we are aware and the entire country is alive to the fact that the PF regime was very violent. And um, not just in the run-up to the elections, but the whole period in their rule, we have had incidences of violence where people were maimed. I could go on citing examples, including um, that of uh, an opposition leader, Sean Tembo, who was maimed along Cairo Road. And these have been subjects of discussion and debate on the floor of this house. We have had instances where Lawrence Banda was killed in Kaoma. And those who killed Lawrence Banda are still free on the streets of this country. Citizens are asking, Honorable Minister, in terms of the space at which the law is supposed to visit these perpetrators of violence, and most of which are PF cadres and are well known. I would not doubt that some of the violence we are seeing today is emanating from people trying to met out outside the law, which we do not support, of course. What I want to find out, and my substantive question to you, Honorable Minister, is how much investigations do you need and how much more time do you need in order to bring to book these PF perpetrators of violence who are well known and dockets were opened and reports were made at various police stations? Could you give a comment and clarify issues for the nation to have assurance that the new Don government will actually met out these atrocities that were committed by the PF in the previous regime. I thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you. The Honorable Minister of Home Affairs and Internal Security. Thank you, Madam Speaker. And I would like to thank uh, the Honorable Member for Zambezi for that uh, very important uh, question he has raised. Madam Speaker, as I indicated earlier, the new Dawn administration would not want to interfere in the investigating wings of government. But I have no doubt, Madam Speaker, that the police have heard and they are listening to the lamentations that are being made by members of the public, by members of this house. And from what I've heard from Honorable Gambita, a member of parliament who is raising these issues, I have no doubt that these are issues that members of the public, including every one of us, are asking as to what is happening. As I indicated earlier, there is no statute of limitation pertaining to criminal cases. And I have no doubt in my mind that the police are taking appropriate action against those who were involved in acts of violence and other heinous crimes. Yeah, yeah. Soon, soon, Madam Speaker, the, the will of justice 
will start increasing their speed. Not through my instigation, but uh, out of the, the own volition by the police and other investigation wings of Zambia. Thank you, the Honorable Member for Chama South. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and thank you, Honorable Minister, for those uh, responses. Honorable Minister, on behalf of the people of Chama South, and indeed, on behalf of all the citizens of this country, violence is bad, whether it's coming from the Patriotic Front or the UPND, it is bad and we need to condemn it. I want to find out from you, because it's clear, Honorable Minister, you are saying the police should act. And the same police who did not act when the purported UPND, or rather PF, Cadres were involved in violence, the way you are referring. You've indicated that the past 10 years of our party being in government, PF, was the violent uh, period, which I doubt it might have been there isolated, Madam Speaker, maybe in some areas, because in Chama we never experienced violence. Much of Nchinga, we never experienced violence. Yes, it was there. Now, what measures have you put in place to ensure that these police officers who were watching the purported cadres committing these acts of violence do not continue doing so? Because we are informed that these same police officers are watching. So what measures have you put in place to ensure that when we come back in 2026, we should also not come and say that the past five years of UPND was a period of violence when the police should have acted. What measures have you put in place to ensure that the police act rather than watch? Thank you, Madam Speaker. The Honorable Minister of Home Affairs and Internal Security. Th thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I'm extremely happy that the Honorable Member for Chama South has raised the issue he has just made on the floor of the House. And accordingly, I would like to respond and inform the nation and for his own benefit that the violence we are witnessing in this country, Madam Speaker, started in Chawama at the first PF meeting. That is the first time when we witnessed the use of pangas. It was under PF in Chawama. And from that day, Madam Speaker, history of this country has been written in blood under the PF. This is the only era where we, we witnessed organized gangs who could roam the streets, terrorize people with the pangas and guns. It was the, during this last era of the PF. The PF cadres had impunity, Madam Speaker, where they could even beat and slap ministers. That is on record under the PF. This is the only time. And we are saying through you, Madam Speaker, that this sad situation should never be allowed to repeat itself in this country. It's a very sad chapter, which all of us as Zambians are born. <laughs> Madam Speaker, it was only under PF where we could see patriotic front cadres clad in military garia being allowed to feature on ZNBC threatening Zambians. That era, that sad 
part of uh, the country's history should not be allowed to repeat itself. And I call upon all, our, all the colleagues who are here, who are leaders, to condemn that sad chapter in the history of this country. Madam Speaker, it was only under PF where pat uh, policemen were not able to uh, perform their functions professionally. Policemen who were able to perform their duties professionally and who were said to be targeting PF cadres who were violent were either retired in national interest, transferred, humiliated. As a result, the our gallant policemen and women started fearing to perform their duties. Yeah. Yeah. Under, our, yeah. under our new dawn administration, Madam Speaker, we will not allow an officer Correct. in the security wing to be retired in national interest for being professional. We would like to retain the dignity of the police so that they perform their duties in the interest of the nation. We will not allow a situation where party cadres were reigning supreme. Party cadres under PF were superior and senior to the PF. They were the ones who were directing the police whom to arrest, whom to humiliate in this country. We will not want to go back to that sad era, Madam Speaker. For the good of this country, we should all condemn violence and we should not allow policemen to be used as tools by the opposition or ruling party. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, the Honorable Member for Bonamukubwa. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker, uh, for allowing me to give a follow-up question. Thank you, Honorable Minister of Home Affairs and Internal Security. Uh, whatever happened in Kasama is very, very uh, sad. And um, the people of Banam Kuba would like to know, Honorable Minister, I've heard you say you've uh, put up enough manpower as well as surveillance to ensure that uh, the operators of the targets are safeguarded as well as our security officers there. But I think, um, <clears throat> uh, uh, Honorable Minister, there's more we need to do because uh, once for, for warned, for armed, because uh, these are thieves are going to keep coming. And uh, we don't know how, uh, <clears throat> uh, how and in, in, in how many numbers. So the issue, the question I have is apart from manpower, uh, do those targets have safes where money can be, can be stored? Secondly, uh, in terms of response, if you look at distances, let's say between these two uh, these targets, are uh, our men in uh, uniform able to respond in good time? If not, what other security measures do you plan to put up as uh, the ministry to ensure that uh, the operators of these targets are safe as well as uh, the officers in terms of backup response? I thank you. The Honorable Minister of Home Affairs and Internal Security. <clears throat> thank you, Madam Speaker. I also want to thank uh, the Honorable Member for Buenam Kuba for raising those pertinent issues. Yeah. Madam Speaker, I just want, uh, first of all, to apologize on behalf of the nation that on the 30th day in Kasama, instead of two policemen, there was only one policeman on that day, which shouldn't have been the case. What we have done, Madam Speaker, is to ensure that at every given time, at every target, especially at night, there's more than one policeman who are guarding the place. Further, we are, we, there are safes at that place and there are surveillance cameras. Even in this sad incident you are talking about, Madam Speaker, the bandit 
who caused the, this mayhem at this particular place was captured on the CCTV, the CCTV camera. We have the footage. And that is why we are saying that uh, we have advanced in terms of investigation. Sooner than later, this particular individual will be nabbed. Madam Speaker, my colleague also has raised the issue of whether there the, is an adequate time to respond in the event of a crisis at the target. That we have taken note, honorable colleague. We are putting measures to ensure that uh, the patrols in areas where we deem that the security situation is not adequate, there are patrols to foster security in those areas. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, honorable members. As we ask our questions, let's not debate. Let's ask points of clarification. We should be precise and to the point and do not debate. And only one question, the honorable member. Honorable member for Luena. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker, for the opportunity to ask a follow-up question to the Minister of Home Affairs and the Internal Security. Honorable Minister, uh, the people of Zambia are certainly very happy to hear that the government, the new Don government, will not take steps to instruct the police on who to arrest for whatever crime they may uh, uh, be alleged to have committed. In relation to the violence, Honorable Minister, people are of the view that the police was not only violent, uh, the PF, sorry, was not only a violent party, but actively promoted uh, and they encouraged violence. And part of the process they actually did to do so is that they fused some of their cadres into the police service. And this might partly explain why some of the crimes that were reported to the police and dockets opened were actually not actively followed up. The question therefore, Honorable Minister, is this. Is the government or is your ministry taking any steps to ensure that PF cadres who were obviously unprofessional but were fused into the police service for purposes of suppressing the citizens are flushed out so that professional police officers who are actually sidelined, uh, some of them taken to far-flung places as punishment for being professional in the police, are given an opportunity to professionally investigate all the crimes, including the violence that was perpetuated by alleged PF cadres uh, over the past 10 years. Thank you. The Honorable Minister of Home Affairs and Internal Security. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, as uh, Minister of Home Affairs and Internal Security, I'm not privy to the recruitment of PF cadres in the Zambia Police Force. As I indicated earlier, the Zambia Police Service at the time were merely being intimidated by the PF leadership for them not to have been taking action. For the issue of uh, cadres in the police service, I'm not aware. As far as I'm concerned, there are good policemen and women who were merely misled by the former government, who are in the opposition now, yeah. who are now lamenting <laughs> pertaining to professionalism in the police service. Yeah. I would like to applaud the Zambia Police Service. Please, for, for the good of this country, continue being professional in the manner you manage national affairs. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you. The Honorable Member for Ron. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you very much, Minister. Madam Speaker, allow me, on behalf of the people of Ron constituency, pass our sincere condolences to the gallant officer who was gunned down, and indeed to the ladies who were raped and brutalized at that particular night. Honorable Minister, 
among us the concerns and the measures that you have mentioned that you are taking, that you are going to put in place. If I look at the events that took place at that particular night, where one, our police officer was gunned down brutally, and yet these thieves even retained the appetite to rape the innocent two ladies and did other acts. To me, honorable minister, it shows that there was time in which these thieves took to do all these evil acts. Honorable minister, is your ministry not considering, amongst the measures that you are putting in place, installing the emergency alert buttons at all the targets? And also, with the job that you have done, and the work, a job well done, honorable minister, of removing some of the police officers' traffic section from the roads, are you not considering also to install or create permanent tents on these targets and direct or redeploy some of these traffic officers to be stationed at these targets? I thank you, Madam Speaker. The Honorable Minister of Home Affairs and Internal Security. Thank you, Madam uh, Speaker. Honorable Member for Ron, I would like to thank you most sincerely for making those uh, uh, number of suggestions to the Zambia Police Service, which, if implemented, will increase security at these tolling stations. I would like to assure you that uh, that particular suggestion you have made will be forwarded to the Zambia Police Command and other security agencies to consider, uh, to consider implementing the same. Thank you very much, Your Honor. The Honorable Member for Mufurira. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, and thank you, Minister, for the two statements that you have issued. Um, Honorable Minister, I think the, the, the nation has heard you. Uh, you have condemned violence, and you are not the first one. In fact, even the president uh, several times has issued uh, similar words, especially to the cadres. Uh, but the problem is that uh, uh, this violence is not stopping. And uh, these are very hard times for the police officers across the country because they are facing intimidation, and they are facing violence, perpetrated by the cadres. And I sympathize with the police officers across the country. And uh, Madam Speaker, these police officers have lost morale. Their motivation is very low. To the extent that, to the extent that Madam Speaker, a few days ago, we witnessed uh, cadres going to a police post in Rwanda erasing what I would say state property in full view of the police. And the people of Mufria, Madam Speaker, were asking when that video was going around, where were the police officers when all these things were happening? But it's because the police have lost morale, Madam Speaker. They are intimidated. Anything you can do, uh, Honorable Minister, to motivate these police officers would be welcome to raise their morale. I refer to the incident at the High Court when um, Honorable Shakafsua's petition was being heard. I'm asking the question. The police officer at that incident at the High Court exhibited very high level of professionalism. And he did not only save a life. He could have lost his own life at the hands of the cadres. Now, I don't think that very soon after losing a life at the target, we could have also lost him. Are you considering, Honorable Minister, any motivation or reward for that particular police officer at the High Court? Because rewarding him individually would raise the morale, not only for him, but also for the rest of the police service, whose morale is at the lowest. Is there any reward being considered for that particular officer at the High Court? I thank you, Madam Speaker. Yeah. Honorable members, as guided, please let's not debate as we ask questions. Some of the questions are repetitive. Just ask questions and they'll be answered so that other honorable members will also have opportunity to ask questions. 
Honorable Minister of Home Affairs and Internal Security. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, as uh, Minister of Home Affairs and Internal Security, I want to state without fear of any contradiction that the morale amongst the police officers are at its highest since independence. Because they have realized that there is a new dawn. And the new yeah. dawn relates to the police officers themselves. Madam Speaker, in order to ensure that there is professionalism in the police and to enhance the morale, we, as New Dawn Administration, have resolved and have started implementing that any office, police officer who was humiliated, who was victimized as a result of being professional, is brought back. Yeah. And we have already done that. Yeah. And some of them are very visible. Even those who have no eyes can use a binoculars like others do when they are campaigning. Let them borrow that binoculars and check. Wherever the, the President of the Republic of Zambia is, they will see a certain individual whom I'm not going to mention, who was a police officer in Sesheke, who was humiliated, who was brutalized by the former regime. He's back. And he's an ADC of the presidency. That just shows commitment. And as a result, of that, and the other senior policemen, Madam Speaker, who were retired in national interest, yeah. have come back higher than what they were. Yeah. It just shows that there is a new dawn, and that will look after any police officer who performs his duties professionally. Yeah. And to show that actually we are very professional, honorable member, if you go to Luansha, you will find that those who had defaced that police station were arrested and they appeared in court today. That just shows that we are not partial. We are impartial. We have no hand in whatever happens because we abhor any form of violence. And that, for us, is a motivation on the part of the police to be professional. And if any one of us commits an offense, the police will follow us without any harm. And like in the past, when you were there, when you were celebrating the plight of others, it will not happen again. Yeah. Thank you. The Honorable Member for Kasama. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Minister of Home Affairs. It is alleged that um, a firearm was, um, containing 30 rounds of ammunition was stolen from the crime scene. Since no arrests have been made and the perpetrator is out on the loose with 30 rounds of ammunition, what measures have you put in place to protect the people of Kasama encountering this bandit, since this was not the first killing incident, there was the first one at Mount Meru service station, the toll gate one was only a second one. What measures have you put in place? Thank you, Honorable Minister. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you. That's the manner in which questions are supposed to be asked. The Honorable Minister of Home Affairs and Internal Security. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I would like to thank the Honorable Member for Kasama. And I would like to appreciate that uh, that is a, a good example of an export which we made to our colleagues on your left. If you hear the way she has answered the question, that is UPND material, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, <laughs> Madam Speaker, I just want to state that uh, we have put 
every measure in place to ensure that the good people of Kasama and Northern Province and other areas, and in particular areas which uh, are bordering other countries, are under our surveillance. We are aware that some of the perpetrators of these heinous crimes are not Zambia. Immediately they commit an offense, they cross into neighboring countries. We are putting measures in place so that the lives of our people are protected. We have enhanced the patrols in those areas, and we are asking the members of the community in northern province, Ruapula, Muchinga, eastern province, where there they are border, borders areas which are porous, to be alert and report any suspicious characters to the police. Thank you. Thank you. The Honorable Member for Lunte. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Speaker, for giving me an opportunity to make a follow-up question to the Honorable Minister of Home Affairs and Internal Security, and also appreciate him for choosing to come to account himself to the Zambian people. Honorable Minister, history is very important. It's a first step of analysis if you want to make a good step going into the future. Listening to you, responding to my colleagues, the Honorable Member of Parliament for Zambezi East and the Honorable Member of Parliament for Chama South, it sounds to me as though there are elements of history that you are deliberately forgetting. Is it not your party, UPND, which established the Mapatizia formula? Is it not your party acting with MMD which established the Mufumbwe bloodbath? Honorable Minister, kindly confirm if PF was, uh, had participated in these two landmark activities which formed the basis of the introduction of political violence in our country. Thank you, Madam Speaker. The Honorable Minister of Home Affairs and Internal Security. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, there is a saying in English that uh, ignorance is bliss. Madam Speaker, for the information of Honorable Kafaya, the Mapatiza formula has nothing to do with violence. The Mapatiza formula was a calculation of ensuring thieves don't steal the vote without violence. That is not a Mopatiza formula. We can even bring the ingredients for you to use. It's a protection of a vote without violence from political opportunists and those who want to use violence. That is the Matapatiza formula. In Mufumbwe, in Mufumbwe, at the time of the violence, the majority of those who were causing violence were in MMD, and they mutated, became PF. Here's the violence which started when PF was formed. The gun culture came from there. That is why the headquarters of the violence under PF was at Intercity. That's where the armory was. And the commanders were high-ranking PF officials. That's why there was no arrest. The history of this country is well articulated. He's, an, he's now an angel. This is a Christian nation, and we allow people to reform. Yeah. Yeah. He has never been involved in any violence from the time of UPND. Just like the other diehard who went and imitated 
and then the PF. I don't know whether they said he's here, but he can speak for himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The Honorable Member for Namwala. Thank you so very much, Madam Speaker. Through you, to the Minister of Home Affairs and in Internal Security. Madam Speaker, I know from the Minister what action the Minister is intending to take to those people who preach tribalism openly, and taking that tribalism is one of the strings that leads to violence. I thank you. The Honorable Minister of Home Affairs and Internal Security. <clears throat> thank you, Madam Speaker. I know that uh, that particular question is outside the ambit of the statements that I was requested to make. But I would like to state, Madam Speaker, that it's a notorious fact that uh, prior to the elections, a number of people, especially in PF, in PF, made hate speeches tribal remarks, even threatening violence. Some of them, Madam Speaker, they are in this house. Yeah. Evidence is there. We heard them say that those who do not hail from a specific area will be killed like cockroaches yeah. and rats. And those members who of the public are now leaders of the country. They must rise to the occasion and apologize to the nation. Yeah. We should not allow leaders like that, Madam Speaker, to be members of this house and remain silent without apologizing. It's shameful, Madam Speaker, that those who made those racial remarks are members of this house. They should be ashamed of themselves. Thank you. The Honorable Member for Kanyama. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Speaker, for this opportunity. And uh, thank you, uh, Honorable Minister, for the elaborate response to the point of order in relation to the Kasama saga. Honorable Minister, you made mention that uh, on that fateful, uh, fateful day when he, we lost our gallant leader, I mean officer, um, he should have been with a colleague who, for whatever reason, did not pitch up for work. Now, my question, uh, uh, Honorable Minister, is that what are the measures you are putting in place to ensure that such absentia does not repeat itself to avoid loss of life in a similar circumstance. I thank you. The Honorable Minister of Home Affairs and Internal Security. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I would not want to indulge and disclose the, the outcomes of the current investigations. I may make a, a statement that will jeopardize the investigations, but what I can ma make and uh, assure the nation is that uh, we will always ensure that at any given time, there is more than one policeman at the tolling station. We shall endeavor to protect our workers who have been given the noble task of collecting resources on our behalf. The other issues, I would not want to you know, comment on them, Madam Speaker. Thank you. The Honorable Member for Kabwe Central. Thank you so much, Madam Speaker. Uh, thank you so much, Honorable Minister for Home Affairs and Internal Security for your answers. Um, I know for sure that what happened in um, Northern is regrettable to our beloved women and uh, we wouldn't like to happen to another woman who work at the toll gates. Um, Honorable Minister, I know the measures that you have put in place of uh, increasing security surveillance 
might not be enough. Are you not considering to advance national road, road fund agents to make the use of the toll, toll cards as a permanent solution to avoid handling of cash at the toll gates, and uh, which is also a danger even for transmission of COVID because every motorist, you have to handle money from exchange of, from hand to hand. Thank you so much. The Honorable Minister of Home Affairs and Internal Security. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I would like to acknowledge uh, the, the noble proposal by my sister, the Honorable Member for Kabwe Central. That suggestion is accepted. But you have to know that uh, in this country, Madam Speaker, we have not reached the level where uh, all people of Zambia can be having the electronic devices of paying uh, for services being rendered. But I have taken note, uh, that is one measure I will recommend to my colleagues who are responsible for this particular money collection exercise. Thank you. The Honorable Member for Solwezi East. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker, and thank you very much, uh, Honorable Minister, for the eloquent response to the questions. Uh, just coming from a by-election in the Solwezi East, uh, Karile Lewad, uh, where we scooped the position uh, of our councillor, and the PF lost with only 51 votes a sign that they're actually going into oblivion. Um, Honorable Minister, having interacted with the police, uh, our men and women in uniform at uh, Enoka Vindele target, they actually made a request that if they can uh, be provided with some kind of accommodation or prefab just near there, as opposed to the suggestion that was given for the tent, if they have some kind of shelter, nicely built there, where our women in uniform can be resting, the men in uniform can also be resting, so that once called upon, when there's such an activity or criminal offense, they can just come from nearby position. They're actually making that suggestion. Are you considering probably accepting such kind of suggestion for prefab accommodation, knowing that those are permanent uh, targets? Thank you. Thank you. The Honorable Minister of Home Affairs and Internal Security. <clears throat> Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, most of the proposals that are being made uh, are acceptable, but I'm not in a position to make a commitment and assurance on the floor of this House. As you may be aware that these are issues that has been to be considered by various uh, ministries, uh, the, the targets uh, are managed by the Ministry of Finance. The infrastructure was built by the Ministry of uh, infra Infrastructure. We provide security at those sites. We'll, we'll have a discussion, Madam Speaker, but the proposal is uh, welcome. Thank you. The Honorable Member for Mbavala. Thank you so much, uh, Madam Speaker. Uh, Honorable Minister, thank you for that uh, wonderful ministerial statement. I wanted to uh, note that during the, from your statement, we have heard about the PF cutters that were arrested with machetes and pangas. And in Eastern Province in Petaoke, we witnessed rival PF gangs fighting and uh, causing mayhem to each other. Is the ministry uh, considering any action to take against violent political parties such as PF so that to stop this uh, mayhem and, and killing and injuring of, of cadres uh, amongst themselves? Thank you. The Honorable Minister of Home Affairs and Internal Security. Thank you, Madam uh, Speaker. Madam Speaker, I, I would like to state that uh, 
my ministry has no immediate intention of taking action against a particular political party vis-a-vis -vis the issues of violence that is being alleged. What we can uh, assure the nation is that we will take appropriate action against individual members of uh, a political party who are involved in uh, violent cases. And uh, as I indicated, we have already taken appropriate action where permissible, like in uh, uh, Kaumbwe, where members of the particular front who were found with the pangas were arrested. But due to the new dawn and the new liberties that people are enjoying, within a few hours of incarceration, they were given police bond. Yeah. Unlike uh, under PF, where people were being arrested, even after three years, that's when they are given police bond or bail. But because we are a party that believes in the rule of law, we have made a commitment that once you are arrested, you must either be given police bond or taken to court within 48 hours. The people of Zambia are breathing fresh air. They have known that now we are in a new dawn. We are enjoying the second liberation new independence, yeah. which even, even the leader of opposition yeah. is extremely yeah. happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. The Honorable Member for Wengwa. Thank you so much, uh, Honorable Madam Speaker. Honorable Minister, thank you very much for your wonderful statement this afternoon. Yeah, Honorable Madam Speaker, I do remember one time our Republican President, His Excellency, Yakainde Chilema, was at one time arrested by the PF government for merely questioning the PF, a criminal organization. Why? The PF took thousands of PF cadres to train in Sudan on how to perfect violence against its citizens. A majority of those PF cadres right now are still in the possession of unlicensed guns. Honorable Minister, we are very much aware that in the last seven years, Zambia was on autopilot. What is the new Dawn government doing, Honorable, Mr. Speaker, Honorable, uh, Honorable Minister, to make sure those guns in the PF cadres' hands are repossessed by the new Dawn government to avoid violence in this country? Thank you very much, Honorable Madam Speaker. The Honorable Minister of Home Affairs and Internal Security. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I want to concur with uh, my brother, Honorable Michel Okasauta for Wengwa, that uh, in the last seven years, the country was on autopilot. Fortunately, the people of Zambia realized that if you allow a, a plane to be on autopilot for a long time, you will crash. So they had to look for a pilot. And on the 12th of August 2021, a pilot was found and is steering the plane to safety. And that is what we are doing. Uh, Madam Speaker, we are aware of the issues of uh, illegal guns in the hands of so many people in this country. Myself and the police command are discussing this issue so that we find ways and means of ensuring illegal guns are not in the hands of those who may want to cause anarchy in the country. At an appropriate time, Madam Speaker, 
I'll come to the House and inform the nation as to what we want to do. Thank you. The Honorable Member for Kavushi. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Speaker. Uh, Minister of Home Affairs and Internal Security, I wish you were president for UPND because the way you have spoken on violence and law of law is totally different from your president, Aka Inde Ichirem. President Aka Inde Ichirem on many fora, he has been encouraging violence. Just last presser which he had, the last pressing, uh, presser he had, he even told the people of Zambia that the UPND, the UPND members, those who are attacking other political parties, including PF in the co commun uh, 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 communities, they are just... A point of order has been raised. Honorable Member for Gabushi, you may take your seat. Honorable Member for Lunte. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Madam Speaker, for allowing me to raise this very important point of order, uh, which I raise on uh, my colleague, the Honorable Member of Parliament for Wengwa, Honorable Michelo Kasauta. Madam Speaker, in terms of uh, standing orders number 65, a member who is debating shall ensure that the information he or she provides to the House is factual and verifiable. Madam Speaker, my colleague makes reference to the fact that PF sent cadres to go and train in Sudan. Uh, Madam Speaker, making such an important claim without laying facts on the table. Madam Speaker, he has implicated another country. He has also implicated an innocent political party which intensified Christianity in this nation, which Christianity now is being erased. Madam Speaker, is the Honorable Member of Parliament for Wengwa in order to allege that PF trained militia in Sudan without ensuring that he makes it concrete by proving, laying the documents on the table. I, I need your, I seek your very serious ruling, Madam Speaker. Thank you. The Honorable Member for Wengwa had asked a question, and the question was even duly answered by the Honorable Minister of Home Affairs and Internal Security. The Honorable Member for Lunte has raised a point of order a bit belatedly. Maybe I didn't recognize you, but the rules of the House, the procedure is that a point of order should be raised contemporaneously immediately when that issue arises. But for purposes of guidance, and I've guided the House earlier on this matter, that as we debate, we must debate on factual uh, issues, not assumptions. Because if we are going to ask questions which attract a response from the other side, then we are just causing confusion in the House. So the type of question we ask also, we should be responsible that those questions are going to attract some response of some sort, either negative or positive. And if we have to maintain order in the house, please let's observe the rules. Let's not make assumptions. Let's even not bring the name of the president in disrepute. That is what the rules, the order, uh, standing order 65, is uh, giving direction to the members of to the honourable members. So please, as we ask questions, let's bear that in mind. Thank you for that point of order. But next time, please be first in asking the point of order, in raising the point of order. Thank you.
Honorable Member for Kabushi can proceed. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Madam Speaker. Minister Home Affairs and Internal Security, as area alluded to, I congratulated you for being firm on, on uh, violence, on violence and law of law, and I wish you were the president for UPND, because we need a person like you in this country to combat violence and to respect the rule of law. Madam Speaker, Minister of Home Affairs, President Taka Indeichema appointed Mr. Siangende as Commissioner of for Order. There is another point of order raised by Honorable Member for Mandi. Honorable Member for Mandi. Uh, thank you. Madam Speaker, I would love to uh, lay, uh, raise a point of order uh, against the Honorable Member who keeps on referring to the President in his debate. I would love to raise this point of order, uh, order number 65, where a member who is debating should not make reference to a person who is not able to defend themselves in the House, except for purposes of rescinding a resolution of the House a member shall not reflect upon resolution of the assembly. So I'd love to raise a point of order. Is the honorable member of Kavushi in order to continuously bring the name of the president in his debate? Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you. Before that point of order was raised, I guided the honorable members accordingly that as we debate, we should do, observe the provisions of Standing Order 65. And in particular, the Honorable Member for Kavushi is referred to Outstanding Order 65-2A, where it provides a member who is debating shall not impute any improper motives to the President, Vice President, or any other member. So please, Honorable Member for Kavushi, as you debate, ask, actually, it's not even a debate, it's questions. You are asking points of clarifications on the statements that have been rendered before this Honorable House by the Honorable Minister of Home Affairs and Internal Security. As you ask your questions, please stick to the points of clarification only, not trying to bring uh, uh, some disagreement or to compare two people, one of whom is not even before this Honorable House. Honorable Member of Kavush, continue, but please bear the guidance in mind. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam uh, Speaker. Uh, Minister of Home Affairs and Internal Security, your government, the new Dawn government, appointed Commissioner of State House, Mr. Siangende. Mr. Siangende, who was a fugitive by then, and you are talking about law of law and respecting, respecting, respecting respecting our constitution, respecting our constitution, and you, your government, your government, your new Dawn government, we want to know how the people of Zambia will trust you when your government is appointing people who were once fugitives and we don't know when they were cleared by law enforcement, and you have given them position in this same uh, government. And also, we want the people of Zambia to know how you are going to treat those UPND cadres, PF cadres, MMD cadres, who find themselves on the other side of the law. I thank you, Madam Speaker. The Honorable Minister of Home Affairs and Internal Security. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, that's why I did indicate 
that uh, the government of the PF was so obnoxious <laughs> that other people, free citizens, who were supposed to exercise their, their rights under the Constitution, ended up being fugitives. These freedom fighters have now come back. There's, there's no freedom in the country. They, they have the right to enjoy like another citizen. And because of the rule of law, even those who are hiding are free in this country. And uh, Madam Speaker, the person whom he's alleging has never been convicted. But I'm aware that under PF, when some people were diehard, they were clobbering others in the streets of Lusaka. And nothing happened to them. And they are here. And they are listening. I haven't mentioned any for this name. Yeah. Yeah, 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 Madam Speaker, yeah. I want to state without fear of any contradiction that the President of the Republic of Zambia, Mr. Hakainde Chilema, is the most brutalized Zambian in this country under the PF dispensation. Yeah, yeah. He was arrested, yeah, 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 he was yeah. arrested more than 16 times under trivial charges. But he has vowed never to avenge and revenge. He has instructed and advised members of the UPND that we should let sleeping dogs lie. Yeah. But he has also said, if you keep on stepping on a, a, the tail of a dog, as it barks, it may bite you. Yeah. That's a fact. So don't step on the tail of a dog, lest <laughs> it will bite you. Yeah. President Hakainde has indicated outside and, this on, on, and on the floor of this house that his government shall not condone any violence. And for the first time after 1991, we have a president of the country who has issued instructions against his own members where he has directed that there shall be no caderism in the markets and bus stations. And he has instructed the police that if any member of the party goes astray or any other party, the law will not protect them. He has made that commitment. And that is leadership. And you are aware, Madam Speaker, that as we speak now, there are a number of UPND cadres appearing in court Something that is unprecedented. Yeah. When the PF was in power, there were no cadres that were being arrested for the heinous crimes they were committing. They were not being arrested. You are aware, Madam Speaker, with your permission to narrate, we had two of our people in Mulobezi who were shot by very senior PF members. Nothing has been done so far. Our member in Ikaoma was shot dead. To date, we have not targeted anyone. You are aware, Madam Speaker, in Mandevu, our chairman was killed in, Man in Mandevu and he, he was beheaded. And that is the reason, Madam Speaker, there was chaos at the High Court because the members of the public, when they identified that individual at the high court, they resorted to take the law in their own hands. It's because of the history, the agri history of the PF, the violence that is being attributed to the PF, that is why members of the public want to take the law in, our hand, in their own hands. But under the leadership of President Hagende, he has instructed all of us that we should never take the law in our own hands. 
and he has guided that violence should not be condoned. He has said violence cannot allow investment to come in the country. And that is why he has given that guidance. And that is why he has said to the people on the copper belt and in the constituency of Kabushi that there is no dawn. President Hakainde will allow the people of Kabushi to live peacefully with others without fear of any recrimination. Because of the leadership of Hakainde Chilema. That is why, Madam Speaker, President Hakainde has decided to go around the country to preach peace. Today he is in Ijinsali. Tomorrow, on Thursday, he will be in Nimala. He will go throughout the country to promote unity and ensure that there is no violence in this country. Because he believes that we are one Zambia, one nation. Not the way it was, where it was one Zambia, one side. We want to unite people. And that is why the MP for Kabushi, I know that very soon he would want to come this side. But we'll put a barrier there. Yeah. We'll put a barrier so that he can come. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>
You and me know for a fact that both UPND and PF cadres are guilty when it comes to perpetuating of violence. Now, Minister, I just want to find out if at your party level, you have immediate plans to begin to discipline these cadres that are perpetuating violence at the party, party political level. So that when the police that political parties are disciplining their cadres at their level, they also have the impetus to continue arresting these cadres. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, the Honorable Minister of Home Affairs and Internal Security. Madam Speaker, I'm here to, to respond as Minister of Home Affairs. I'm not going to respond as a party official. Because if I start responding as a party official, I'll go astray. This is a, a parliament of the Republic of Zambia where we discuss you know, government issues. Thank you. The Honorable Member for Kankoyo. Uh, thank you very much, Madam Speaker, for this opportunity. Uh, first of all, I want to congratulate uh, my colleagues, the PF, for having retained the two seats in the by-election. I think it was very important for our democracy to grow and to remain competitive as a country. I congratulate you for that. <laughs> Madam Speaker, as the son of a policeman, I can imagine the, the pain uh, the, the family of the police officer was shot in Kasama going through. Because when I was only 13 years old, we as a family experienced a situation where my father was also almost killed by the bandits. And we know how it means when your parent is battling for his life due to an attack. I'm therefore earnestly appealing to the Minister of Home Affairs to ensure that that family is um, quickly and uh, as early as possible compensated for the loss of the family so that they can ease their pain. I submit, Madam Speaker. The Honorable Minister of Home Affairs and Internal Security. I'm making an assumption, Madam Speaker, uh, arising from the question that has been raised by my brother, Honorable Member of Parliament for Kankoyo. If my assumption is correct, he is requesting my office and the office of the Inspector General of Police that uh, we look after the family of the late policeman. I would like to assure my colleague that my ministry will look after the family of the policeman who, has died, who died on duty. It is our responsibility to look after any law enforcement officer who die in the course of duty. And that is the only way you can motivate the family of that you know, officer and also motivate officers who are protecting the property and the lives of our people. That is an assurance. Madam Speaker, I also want to congratulate the PF for winning Kaungwe. But Madam Speaker, they could not celebrate as a result of the winning of Kaungwe. Because, because Madam Speaker, as I'm speaking, I've just come out of their bedroom where I was sleeping, covering myself in a chali bed in Mwansabongwe. An area which they always thought was a no go area. They are crying. I can see the tears on the face of Honorable Rusambo. He never thought that uh, we will win in Masabongo. Mm -hmm. Order. Honorable Member for Mpongwe. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Minister. Honorable Minister, the PF left most of the police stations in, in the country without uh, vehicles, which has worsened the security situation in the country because
because police can't do night patrols, even in targets. I just want to ask uh, the Honorable Minister, is the Ministry considering buying more vehicles to, to the, the police so that uh, the security situation can, can be improved in the country? Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. The Honorable Minister of...